sunrise finds a red-tailed hawk patiently waiting for the tens of thousands of red-winged blackbirds to move from the water's edge in their nighttime fortress of reeds to forage on the freshly reaped fields. The quiet will be over as soon as the pink fades. The white-tailed deer are in full rut and the clearing sky reveals fields full of does. A lone battle-scarred buck is in hot pursuit despite the loss of half of his rack on the left side. With no other bucks out right now, maybe he can turn this mating season around and pass his genes on to the next generation. He certainly fought for it. Still a fairly young eight-pointer, he's now reduced to six and likely won't be able to win a contest for love this year. He'd be lucky not to be injured with his left eye so unprotected. So now's his chance. As he slips into the remaining tall grass and stray corn stalks, I secretly wish him luck man to man. And seconds before he disappears, he gives me a last look. In Missouri, weather changes on a dime. The sky darkens and blackbirds fill the air behind an eagle's nest. Both the architect of that nest and the life that most recently sprung from it head to the river to hunt in the rain. A pied-bill grebe catches more than a mouthful, somehow manages to get it down and dive in time as the eagles pass over. In the dissipating rain, I catch a cardinal and a groundhog foraging acorns in a clearing under an oak. And as the clouds shift and the sun begins to shine again, a great blue heron moves into hunting position. In the awakening light, the colors of fall, already faded a little, seem to help the sun warm the day. A raccoon moves along the edge of a harvested cornfield, seeking out the scrap cobs littered about. Dining in my presence without a care in the world, he's got to get it while the getting's good, as a long winter slowly approaches. With the same idea in mind, the blackbirds swarm the field, feeding heavily in preparation for the rest of their journey. And always watching from the wings are their silent stalkers, hungry raptors, like this red-tailed hawk diving into the fray. And this northern harrier cruising over the field searching for unaware strays. She cruises past our architect, who is far more interested in the American coots and could care less about trying to hunt red-winged blackbirds. She takes off on a low approach she won't gain altitude until she's right over him. No point in giving away the game before the game begins. Circling tighter and tighter. If she does it right, instead of panicking and flying across the wetland, the coots will dive. She can hover and drop slowly and calmly grab one as it pops back up to the surface. The outcome forever a secret kept by the tall grass. Kestrels and merlins get in the game as well, but tiny falcons take tiny prey. Unlike tiny grebes, who seem to insist on only catching fish nearly impossible to swallow. These overachievers' eyes may be bigger than their stomachs, and are certainly bigger than their mouths. With sunset fast approaching on a shortened fall day, the mega flocks of red wings make their way back to the relative safety of the reed beds on the water's edge. For every reed there is a bird perched, and their arrival is no secret as the air fills with the sound of wing beats and calls. Close by is another raptor, nimble enough to snatch a sunset snap from the reeds, the Cooper's Hawk. A predator of almost exclusively small birds, this raptor's long legs and digits straight from a horror movie are tipped with talons perfectly suited for this moment. Unaware, but nowhere else to go even if they were, the squabble over the choicest bedrooms continues. So in the last light of day, the flock will likely shrink by one, as like a sprinter out of the blocks, this first year Cooper's Hawk practices its profession. As our October fall day comes to an end, our coot-filled architect surveys her domain from high above the settling flock of chattering travelers.
Above her, greater white-fronted geese call out formation instructions to each other as they flee south, and myriads of ducks fly from cover to open water. Our great blue heron settles itself against the bank, warming in a shaft of light, and a Wilson snipe all but disappears from the night, perfectly camouflaged and protected against predators. Back above the reeds, the wetland queen is joined by her lifelong mate, and like young lovers parked on a hilltop, they will watch the sunset together. Twice a day, at least, 365 days a year, they will join to watch suns and moons rise and fall, and palettes of color paint the sky. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and feel free to comment below. I've got quite a few photo trips coming up. We'll have short eared owls in St. Louis. Back to Lock and Dam 18 with the bald eagles and Saxon Bog in December, hopefully, for weasels and more owls.